What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope all you had a great weekend. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to keep my eyes open. <laughs> when I tell you work kicked my ass today, work kicked my ass today. Like, literally did like a 10-hour day today. Like, it was a lot to do and not a lot of time to do it in. But we got, we got most of it done. Majority of it was finished. I need a nap to get to tired right now. That's how tired I am. But um, <clears throat> getting into GH, um, I totally understand where TJ is coming from. I totally support TJ. Normally, I would support this, you know, doing a protest, stand up for what's right. But this is where I have to agree with everybody else that TJ needs to back off because he's playing a dangerous game. He's playing a very dangerous game. In my opinion, he's playing a fool's game. You can't win this. I'm all for, you know, sticking up for your rights, sticking up for everybody else. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. But you're not going up against your average Joe. You're not going up against some legitimate businessman. You're not going up against a corporation. You're going up against somebody who's a sociopath who will kill you just by snapping their damn fingers like you're going up against somebody who is dangerous. You know what I mean? I love the fact that TJ's fearless. I love that. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I believe, you know, fear, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. You know what I mean? I believe in not being afraid of anything. But you have to you have to pick your battles. That I believe in as well. Pick your battles very wisely. And I feel like this is not a battle TJ should pick. This is not one that he should fight. That's just how I feel. I feel he should continue to go to the hospital, do what he got to do and focus on positive things in his life. Like, you know, Stella and all them been trying to tell him, focus on, you know, your commitment ceremony. Eh, actually, no, nah, you don't want to focus on that one because I have a feeling that that commitment ceremony is going to go up and going to go up in flames. Um, I don't know. If they do this commitment cer ceremony. I just have a feeling it's going to be bad. Um, so yeah, even Brando was telling TJ not to do this, you know, back off of Cyrus. Brando was telling him, uh, Jordan had to come talk to him and, you know, tell him to focus on other things and back off of this. But, you know, TJ's not going to listen. He's stubborn as all hell. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's a lot of qualities in TJ that I like, that I believe in. This is just one that <laughs> I can't support this battle. You know what I mean? Because you're playing a fool's game. You know, this is a dangerous one that you're playing and you don't want to do it. I'm just saying you get yourself killed. You get Molly killed. Like, you really don't want to do this. And I mean, how many other people are going to join this protest? Who's really going to be brave enough to step up against Cyrus? You know what I mean? Like, I could see Epiphany. I could see Elizabeth. Maybe I could see Franco. Maybe, you know, because they all want to keep their jobs and try to save their jobs. But Everybody else in the hospital knows Cyrus's reputation. I'm pretty sure they all heard about it. So I don't think they're going to be brave enough to do it. Plus, they all got bills. You know, if you do a work stoppage, there's a check stoppage. You know what I'm saying? And them bills ain't going to pay themselves. So I don't know, TJ. I don't know. You might be the lone wolf fighting this battle, bro. But, you know, I support it from the sidelines. But <laughs> I, I mean, if he does go ahead with this protest, I hope it turns out the way he, you know, sees it. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with Aunt Stella. I feel like TJ's using this protest and, you know, he's doing this as a way to deal with his trauma of being kidnapped and stuff like that. I think this is a symptom of it. Um. But I do agree with Molly. I feel like he does need to talk to someone professionally. Maybe Kevin, you know, he needs to talk to someone. But I, I don't feel like he's he's ready for that yet. You know, the way he opened up to Ancella, I don't think he's ready to sit down with a professional and open up to them that way. It was easy for him to talk to Ancella about it because it wasn't in a professional capacity. He was talking to someone he really loved and he trusts. You know what I'm saying? So when he's ready to sit down and talk in a professional capacity, you know, to a professional then maybe he'll do that. But I don't think right now he's ready to do that. And I can't say I blame him, but, you know, everybody has their way of dealing with things. I mean, you know, some may agree with the way you deal with it. Some may not. There are healthy ways of dealing with a situation. Then there's are, there are unhealthy ways. 
I feel like him going up against Cyrus Renault is a very unhealthy way. <laughs> like, literally. It's, it's not good for your health. Um, so, anyway... Curtis and Stella were talking and stuff like that. And they were talking about Trina and Portia. And he was telling Stella that he had a past with Portia. When he said all that, Stella was looking at him being all curious and stuff. I think Stella going to put two and two together. She was like, so you were with her at what time? And how old is Trina? You know Stella going to do the math. You know Stella going to break this down like a fraction. You know she will. She, Curtis. I just, if for a smart person, Curtis can be dumb sometimes. And he's a very smart person. Curtis is one of my favorites on this show. Let's just put it that way. He's really one of my favorites. But I'm like, Curtis, put two and two together, Curtis. That's your child. Even when he first seen them, he was doing the math in his head until she was like, no, she's not your daughter. I would never take the word of nobody. I'm sorry. We're going to have to go to, we're going to have to go to Maury. We're going to have to go to Maury Povich. We're going to have to do the DNA. You know how? You know what's so funny about Maury? Is that when them chicks be swearing up and down, he the father, he the father. Maury be like, he is not the father. You see how they be running off that stage like a fool? <laughs> they be all running up the stage, crying, falling on the floor, just acting all type of fool. Like, sit down somewhere. You knew that man wasn't the baby dad. You knew that when you just wanted to be on TV. You knew good and damn well he ain't no father. You knew that. You knew Lil Ray Ray from down the street was your baby daddy. You knew that. You just wanted to get on TV. But you ain't want to bring Lil Ray Ray on TV. Because you was ashamed that you slept with Lil Ray Ray. So you want to bring Malcolm, the smooth one, on the show. You know what I'm saying? But you got your face cracked when, when them, you know, come on now, try and come on TV and show out. I'm one of these days, I'm going to get me a ticket. When COVID is over, I'm going to get me, because you know the tickets to these shows are free. So you know I'm going to get me a ticket to Maury one of these days. I'm going to sit in the audience. I've been wanting to go to a talk show and sit in the audience like Jerry Springer. I'm mad they canceled Jerry Springer. That was the show. That show had been running for over two decades. That was my show. Um. So anyway, yeah. Curtis, get that DNA test, please. And honestly, I would do it at an independent lab because, I mean, for one, Portia works at GH, so there's a chance she could find out that you're running some type of DNA test. It wouldn't be hard for her to find that out because she works there. But also... You got Britt and Cyrus running the show. So I wouldn't trust no tests that come out of that hospital. I would have to go to Mercy or I would have to get it done at an independent lab. I'm just saying because GH is a little janky right now. So anyway, moving on from that. So Ava done got the phone call from Ryan Chamberlain with his crazy ass. Um, basically asking Ava to come see him. Um... Talking about he missed her and all this foolishness. You know Ryan is sick. <laughs> um, talking about he want to see her because he need to discuss something with her. Ava was like, I don't want nothing to do with you. We not. Mm -mm. And Ryan was like, he told Ava, he warned Ava that he gets angry when he's ignored. First of all, Ryan, ain't nobody scared of your punk ass. You in Pentonville. Ain't nobody scared of you. Like, who's afraid of you? You locked up. You know, but you know, Ryan has his ways. Um, so, after she hang up with him, Nicholas and Julian basically was telling her to ignore Ryan. You know, because he gets off of her, you know, he feeds off of her, her fear. And honestly, I don't think Ava fears him. I don't think she fears him at all. Like, don't underestimate Ava. Ava has no fear in her heart for Ryan Chamberlain. None whatsoever. Um, but Ava feels that she does need to go see Ryan because she feels like he wouldn't have called her out the blue asking to discuss something with her if it wasn't important. Because she feels like he knows something. Because he, he just called her out the blue talking about, oh, we need to discuss something. She knows he's sitting on some information. That he obviously want to share with her. She could sense that much. But you know Julian and Nicholas was like. Nah don't go see him. Ignore him. He's a waste of time. He's in the past. But Ava ain't stupid. She was like nah he knows something. I'm going to go see him. Um, And she really wants to go see him. Because you know that's the man that murdered her daughter. So you know she's always going to carry that hatred and that hurt. Um, 
And of course, when she brought that up, it brings up the fact that Nicholas did taunt her about Kiki. And he's continuously apologizing for that. But Ava made it clear that she will never forgive Nicholas for what he did to her. Like, you know, gaslighting her, you know, talking crap about, you know, how much Kiki would hate her and this, that, and the third. You know, she's never going to forgive him for that. Um... And Nicholas, you know, he admitted he was wrong for it, but he was upset that she was trying to compare him and say he was just as bad as Ryan. But, you know, she later was like, nah, you're not as bad as Ryan, but I still, you know, can't forgive you for what you said. So I totally get that. Um, but she feels at this point she's strong enough to know that she's not going to be played by Ryan like she was played by him before. Because she can see him coming. She knows all his tricks at this point. His ways of trying to manipulate. And you know she she can see all that coming. So she was like nah. He, he ain't gonna get away with it. She see him coming at this point. Um, so of course. Ava heads to Pentonville to talk to Ryan. And we all know what he want to talk to her about. It's about the letter that Nell le uh, sent to him. About Julian and the kidnapping of Wiley and all that stuff, like all his misdeeds. So we all know that's more than likely what he wants to talk to her about. I feel bad for Trina, though, because she's going through all these different stages of grief. You know, one minute she just gets these waves of sadness, you know, about Tagger. And then, you know, when she's trying to move on and have fun and she's not thinking about her dad, she feels bad because she's not thinking about him. But my thing is, that's what her dad would have wanted, you know, if he was actually dead. But Taggart is very much alive. Um, but even still, he wants her to move on, wants her to be happy, live her life, enjoy these moments like the homecoming dance. These are big milestones in her life. She shouldn't be walking around depressed and sad about that. You know what I'm saying? You should be at the dance having the time of your life. Like these are things that you're going to look back on when you're older. You know what I mean? And be like, yo, I had a ball. Like, I live life. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to just be there sad. I mean, I understand, you know, the circumstances. But, you know, life is to be enjoyed. Um, and it was good that Portia was there to comfort her and stuff. And tell her that grief can be tricky. And, you know, and of course, she started asking Trina about her and Cameron. And Trina brushes it off. I think Trina definitely is feeling Cam. But I think she feels like if they hook up or they become a couple, it might affect the relationship, like their friendship. In my opinion, I love when people become a couple after being friends for so long because I think being friends first is a great um, is a great way to start a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Because you got that foundation. Y'all are comfortable with each other. You know, you know everything about them already. From a friend point, you know what I mean? You know their likes, their dislikes, you know what they don't, you know, you know everything. So that's a great foundation to build a romantic relationship off of. I think a lot of people should be friends before they become a couple. Um, instead of just going, you know, there's nothing wrong with going headfirst into a relationship. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, you want to feel like you're with your best friend. Because a lot of married people, they be like, oh, my husband, my wife, that's my best friend. You know what I'm saying? That's That's the feeling that you want. You know, so I think that could be a good thing. Um, of course, Dev, you know, walks in on Cameron and Joss having a COVID kiss. Um, Dev basically was telling Jocelyn that Trina was upset. So Jocelyn goes off to go find her. Um, and I'm glad, you know, Trina has a friend that's there for her because God knows Trina always been there for Jocelyn. So it is good that Jocelyn's there for her and taking her to the side so they could talk. Um, so, of course, Deb starts questioning Cameron about him and Jocelyn and him and Trina. Um, and he was wondering if Cameron would have kissed Trina if he bumped into her first. I'm like, well, he did bump into her first and she kind of basically made it, you know, clear that, you know, she was upset or whatever. So he, him and Joss were talking and they kissed, but Cam basically made it clear that he has feelings for both of them. You know, he has feelings for Joss. He has feelings for Trina, but he doesn't want to ruin either of those friendships. So he's in an awkward situation. And of course, we all know 
Dev has feelings for Joss, but he's basically telling, you know, Cam to tell them both how he feels. But Cam, you know, Cameron, he's confused about his feelings right now because he likes both girls, um, obviously for different reasons, but he don't want to hurt either one of them. So he's in a hell of a jam, basically. You know, he's between a rock and a hard place at this point. So Cam basically has some decisions to make, like who does he go with, you know, or should he just stay friends with both? Who knows? Um, I like him with either or, but I really like him with Trina. I really do. I like the chemistry he has with Jocelyn, but I'm I, I'm feeling him and Trina though. I really am. And of course, Portia and Liz start talking about the kids being all up in the kids business. Um, basically talking about how there might be something going on between Cameron and Trina. I'm like, first of all, old people, y'all need to mind y'all business and stay out these kids' business. <laughs> That's what y'all need to do. Um, but it's funny, though. They're sitting there talking about their kids and stuff. And if they're going to be together and all that. That shit is hilarious. Um, so, basically, Jason um, meets up with Sonny. And he's updating Sonny about um, basically letting Sonny know that Cyrus is getting aggressive in his approach. And he's trying to recruit people. Um, basically telling him he was talking with Julian. Now he's trying to. Uh, recruit Brando to his side and Jason feels like Cyrus is getting arrogant I would agree with that because I feel like Cyrus is very arrogant he's very cocky and Jason feels like that's their that's that's going to be his downfall his arrogance will definitely be his undoing in a lot of cases that that can be true for a lot of people um and he feels like his arrogance is how they'll bring him down so when Brando showed up Jason basically told Sonny about his plan to have Brando join Cyrus's team um, and make Cyrus think that Brando's 100% loyal to him and not the Corinthoses. Sonny feels like that's not a totally... Sonny's not on board with that idea. He's not. I personally feel like it's a good idea to an extent, but Cyrus is very smart. If y'all are going to play this game, you got to play it very smart. You literally cannot play checkers. You have to play chess on this one. This is a game of chess because you're going up against somebody who's smart, who has eyes and ears in places. So you need to be about 10 steps ahead of Cyrus. I'm just saying in order for this plan to work, you really have to make that man believe Brando is totally against the Corinthoses. And I think eventually if Brando joins up with Cyrus's team, Cyrus is going to put Brando to the test to see if Brando really is team Cyrus. And we all know what that means. He's more than likely going to have Cyrus. I mean, Cyrus is more than likely going to have Brando do something to one of the Corinthos family members to prove as a test, to prove his loyalty to Cyrus and prove he's really on Team Cyrus. So they need to be ready for that um, because I have a feeling it's going to be coming very soon. So who knows what Cyrus is going to want Brando to do? Maybe shoot some one of the Corinthoses, do something disloyal to them, like do something to hurt one of them. He's going to want that in order to prove it. So Sonny and Jason need to be ready for it. Um, but, you know, Sonny, he just doesn't want Brando involved in this. But Brando was telling him, like, I'm a, I'm, I was a soldier. You know, I'm a trained soldier. Like, I know how to handle myself. Um, and he wants to protect Sonny and the family. But Sonny feels like Brando's going to be used as a weapon against him in this war. But Brando assures him that he's ready for it. So, you know, I don't really think Sonny got much of a choice at this point. Because how else are you going to stop Cyrus? Like, you're going to need somebody on the inside. Who better than Brando? But we we shall see if this plan is going to blow up in Jason and Sonny's face. Or if it's going to come to fruition. But like I said, in order for this plan to work, you got to be about five to ten steps ahead of Cyrus. Because Cyrus was damn sure not born last night. That man is smart. So... He's going to eventually, I feel like he's eventually going to put Brando to the test to prove it. Um, but anyway, this was a pretty good episode. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. I will see y'all all later. Have a good night. Peace.